forced 10 steals. They were able to pick up all the balls in transition. And what I'm interested in is to see how Virginia Tech can react. They have more turnovers than they are used to. 10 in the first half. They averaged 10 for the game. So I think it's going to be critical that they make good decisions. Georgia Amor is going to have the ball in her hands a lot tonight. Okay, well, let's look at first the visiting team with Tulane. And it starts with their backcourt and Kyrie Whittington, who was able to draw nine fouls. The aggressive play is what's most impressive about how she sets the tone. Well, she was the difference maker on the floor. She had to go out because of a, a little injury that she had, and, and everything collapsed for Tulane. Her defensive intensity, the way she gets to the rim, she was 8 for 10 from the free throw line, so she's drawing fouls, four steals for her alone in that game. And if you look on the other side, we'll stay in the backcourt as well. For Georgia a they did get the win, and Coach Brooks told us post-game, she played a little bit of out of her character. She is a player that had 24 assists, one turnover, over two games, nine yesterday, adjustments. Yeah, we were on double-double watch, but not for the right category. Yes. <laughs> nine turnovers <laughs> is not indicative of what we know from Georgia Amor. She does such a great job, though, getting the ball to where it needs to go. She hit shots from long range. She is a tremendous part of what Virginia Tech has done, and she is really the one-two punch for this team. Yeah, the one-two punch, absolutely, when you're seeing how she was able to play off of Elizabeth Kitley, that was a player that was our player to watch for yesterday for Virginia Tech. And Kitley didn't have a shabby game yesterday as well as she walked away with 31 points and 18 rebounds. So Kitley is definitely a player that has established herself as an All-American within the women's game. And she'll be able to take the circle to start things off against Tulane. So Tulane taking the court for today at three and two. Virginia Tech has moved on since their win yesterday at four and one. And now the former Metro Compass foes actually being in the same conference before Tulane and Virginia Tech meeting. This is the 17th time, and the Hokies have won on nine occasions. Here's the starting lineup for Virginia Tech. Matilda Eck, Kayla King, Elizabeth Kitley, Rose Michaud, and Georgia Amore. Surprising enough for Virginia Tech to be a three-point shooting team as you see one drain in the corner for Kayla King to start. They only hit three threes yesterday. Yeah, and so that feels really good coming at the beginning of this game, gaining confidence. Kayla King in particular, one of those players you cannot go off of at all on defense. So how about Tulane? A travel to start was looking for some movement in the offense. But we have, we would be remiss if we didn't talk about the jump that Tulane had in the first quarter. It was because of the defense, yes, but also because of their ability to knock down threes in the first quarter as well. They played so cohesive as a team and everyone doing what they're supposed to do. Mar Marta Golich, player there, number three, who's defending King right now. Just an excellent tall guard, has a great ability to get to the rim, scores at three levels. I think she should be very important in this game today as well. Kit Lee with a nice move around in the paint and she's able to get two points on the board. Well, Irina Perot has the difficult assignment of taking the All-American. Perot actually didn't score in yesterday's game against Virginia. So looking to change things around for today, Pratt who misses from up top, was the leading scorer for the Green Wave. She finished with 15. Georgia Amor, offensive foul, trying to work that baseline. Kayla King like, I'll, I'll get you next time. And there's Lisa Stockton in her 30th season at Tulane, the winningest coach in Louisiana. And also just recently was so that she'll be inducted into the Conference USA Hall of Fame. She's been a mainstay there at Tulane, so well respected among the women's basketball community. Many, many accolades for this coach who's stayed at one place for 30 years. Yeah, absolutely. And I think one thing that she's very proud of as well is that every four-year player has completed their degree in her tenure as well. And so when we are student athletes first. Student comes first, and that is so important. And Hannah Pratt on the board early gets the three to fall. And that is what we saw all game long from Kyron Whittington. Defense turning into offense. Quick hands, anticipates passing lanes. We had a lot of coaches sitting next to us just the other day, scouting one another, knowing that game two was on the way as Rose Nishaw is able to finish on the left side. But 
they are very well aware. The Hokies are aware of what Tulane can do if Pratt knocks down another triple. Yeah, you watch Tulane in that first quarter and you see of yesterday's game and you see the potential in this team. They brought in some transfers who have made immediate impacts on the floor and you see Hannah Pratt already getting hot. That is gonna be a disaster for Virginia Tech. So back-to-back -back triples for Tulane. Rainey to the rim. Georgia Amore has a canny ability to turn the corner. Finds Eck. Kayla King moving in another corner. That went in and out for the Hokies. Georgia Amore loves to hunt that baseline spot. If she doesn't get her own shot, the defense has collapsed and she's able to find open shooters. Irina Perot couldn't hit from outside, but you know that's something that they're trying to get established early in this ball game is Kayla King trying to draw the contact on the outside. What we need to head over to Kenny Brooks, who doesn't look too no. pleased with the start of his team. Eighth season at Virginia Tech and got their first ACC title and their first Final Four in last season. I think just the ascension of what he's been able to do in his eight seasons, program record eight wins versus ranked teams last year, just continues to build on that in this one. Yeah, the maturation of this team year after year and what he's built, the players he's brought in, the ability to find the players in the portal, portal that fit his structure. He always has five players on the floor that play well together and do their roles very well. And he's going to need that with so many different faces on the roster for the season. Brought in two transfers as well. One of them on the floor for him right now, the Wake Forest transfer and Olivia Samuel. How about Golich? Left alone on the three-point line and couldn't make him pay in that one. Yeah, transition defense going to be important for the way that Tulane can shoot. I feel like, and correct me if I'm wrong, as there's an and one called on the inside, but both teams have heavily relied on the three-pointer to start the game. Yeah, you wonder sometimes if that's due to legs, right? Because it's easier to come down and shoot a three than have to battle inside. The miss there, and then Samuel with the offensive board and bucket with the foul. I love when the four player steps up. When you've got a player like Kitley, those four, Samuel, Misha, and we already saw Misha hit a bucket. They take pressure off of Liz Kitley and what she's trying to do inside, and they will, shots will open up for them because of the pressure that Kitley requires. Samuel being able to knock that one down for the three point play. Eleven games with 10 or more rebounds. When she was at Wake Forest, we saw how she was able to clean up off that rebound on the other end. Hannah Pratt right on line, just can't get it to fall. Yeah, she is feeling confident coming off that game, as you said, leading scorer yesterday and already with a couple threes today. Samuel doesn't hesitate, knocks the bin range jumper down. Zero points for Olivia Samuel yesterday, already now with a couple. Pratt will dial it up once again. This one falls from the other side. All right, I imagine a timeout's coming soon. Transition defense needs to be better for Virginia Tech. And if a timeout is coming, a substitution is coming at least for Virginia Tech. <laughs> that may be the answer Kenny Brooks needs. <laughs> Elizabeth Kitley trying to go at Perot. Great defense and actually forces a tough shot for Kitley. Yeah, Perot is going to have to defend like that for 40 minutes, and that's going to be difficult against a player like Liz Kitley. I love what she just did there. Made Kitley take a tough shot. Perot gets the pass from Golich. You mentioned it. There's a lot of outside. I don't know if we can track it on the shot chart, but there have only been two shots on the inside this entire game from both sides. Hannah Pratt, 15 points in the loss yesterday. Seven boards to go along with that, but she is playing with loads of confidence. And Virginia Tech has left her wide open. Transition defense lacking for the Hokies. Tulane taking full advantage.
Those empty calories just leave you feeling empty. Enough sucky sucking, more power sipping. Jam packed with whole fruits, organic veggies, and super boosters. So, no bad stuff, only at Smoothie King. Known for its crystal clear waters, cool blue skies, and playful residents. Enjoy a variety of water sports, including paddle boards, jet skis, and sailing. Swim with the stingrays, relax on a luxury catamaran, whatever your fancy. Dive, sail, play with Red Sail Sports. Check out the series history between Tulane and Virginia Tech. We talked about them actually being in the same conference at one point in the Metro Conference in their last meeting happening in 1995. Virginia Tech was able to edge the green wave in that one. 77 to 65, but I think it's very interesting that neutral site, we'll see, is tied at 1-1. We're in a neutral site in the beautiful Cayman Islands for this one, and Lisa Stockton and Kenny Brooks trying to figure out how to get their team on the right page. I think Lisa Stockton is pleased with how her team has come out so far and has been able to connect from outside. Kenny Brooks wants to see a little bit more from Elizabeth Kitley on the inside, I'm assuming. Yeah, I think Liz Stock, or excuse me, Coach Stockton has to be pleased with the way her team is playing. The only downfall right now is five turnovers for the Green Wave, but everything has been going well. In particular, Hannah Pratt, who puts down another two. She's got 11 points already early in this contest. So you mean she has 11 <laughs> of the 13 points? That's what I'm trying to say, Angel. Samuel, that's blocked at the top of the key by Mabry, and Kitley's able to rebound it. So another scenario where they're gonna have to find another look on the inside. Kitley able to clean it up on that possession. Well, they're trying to double Kitley early in the possession, and then Ball had to come off and take Samuel up top, left Liz Kitley open. Better defense on this series as we have Kayla Rainey at the top of the key, that's a turnover for the Green Wave in their second of the game. Virginia Tech gives it right back with an offensive foul. So Olivia Samuel picks up her first foul on that possession. When you're playing a team like Virginia Tech, who is ranked nationally, you have to take advantage of their mistakes. So offensive foul on the screen. You got to take advantage right here. Tulane has done a good job of isolating the players that they want to out of their sets. And another foul on Samuel. Yeah, back-to-back -back fouls for Olivia Samuel. Trying to fight for position on the block. So we've seen a lot of that physical play from Amira Mabry, which we saw a lot yesterday as well. Yeah, Mabry, just the bright spot for Tulane, came in this game and nine points, nine boards for her. Samuel with the rebound. You do think about it, Virginia Tech, one of the teams that was coming in and had the quick turnaround as Olivia Samuel was really breaking out in this game for Virginia Tech. I mean, you know, I, was, I thought for sure Kenny Brooks would substitute two quick fouls, but he is having full confidence in his transfer. And she comes down and hits a three and a missed shot, an opportunity for Tulane. Bump on that play as well. So Samaya Suffren got fouled on the baseline. So Olivia Samuel, somehow the leading scorer for Virginia Tech early in this one. Kenny Brooks has got to love it. Players coming off the bench, hitting threes. Samuel has done her job defensively as well. Came to play. So it's interesting enough as they're able to knock this one down for Elizabeth Kitley. As you mentioned, Olivia Samuel, this is the most points she's had with Virginia Tech this season. She had four points against High Point, two against Iowa, and had three consecutive games where she was held scoreless. And we are early in this game and somehow already at her high for Virginia Tech. And what a great high-low look inside to Mabry, who's able to finish even with Liz Kitley in the area. Kitley fouled from behind by Perot. And Perot cannot commit that foul. Let her get the ball 
you need your presence on the floor is more important. There's the ball screen action. Does a good job of coming off shoulder to shoulder. Finds Mabry down low, who's able to finish with the left hand. Beautiful execution. Joy Madison Key has the assignment for Georgia Amor. Deep three for Kayla King on target just short. And this will be sent back to Tulane. And you just see the desperation for this two-lane defense trying to figure out how to stay in a double on Liz Kitley with a shooter like Kayla King on her side. Very difficult. Perot almost did not make it out there to defend. Whittington wraps it around to Perot. And that's been an emphasis for the officials in this season, is making sure that there is no uh, impediment of movement for the offense. And so the foul at the top of the key goes against Virginia Tech. Rose Michal checks back in for the Hokies. Olivia Samuel with really good minutes for Virginia Tech and takes a seat at the front of the bench. She played five minutes, Angel. She's got eight points and is the leading scorer for Virginia Tech. That's efficiency. Less than a minute to play in the first quarter. Georgia Amor might have taken a hit to the face. So Kyron Whittington picks up the foul. That'll be her first. I'm impressed she took the handle. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, she kept the handle. That right. was amazing. Got hit in the eye, it looked like and somehow was still able <laughs> to advance the ball up the floor. Both teams with four fouls in this first quarter. Rose Mishaw is begging for the ball on the block and in and out on the left. And good look out of the horn set. Isolate Mishaw on the block. So wisely at the top of the key, you have Kiara Grattini taking some time off the clock, knowing that they have an opportunity for the last shot. Three seconds to work with for Kayla King. She heaves it. And just off the mark. As we come to a close for the first quarter. So it was a back and forth quarter that we saw from both teams. And Samuel, really the big key for Virginia Tech while they have the lead after the first break. Yeah, both teams taking a whole lot of threes. Nine for Tulane, eight for Virginia Tech. Samuel gets their, that one to fall. We have enjoyed a first quarter of high speed, fast pace, great individual performances. Those empty calories just leave you feeling empty. Enough sucky sucking, more power sipping. Jam packed with whole fruits, organic veggies, and super boosters. So, no bad stuff, only at Smoothie King. For over 35 years, Tortuga has baked their original rum cake in Cayman. From our kitchens in our homes to exporting across the world, proudly baked in Cayman has always been at the heart of everything we do. Our recipe, handed down by six generations, has remained a secret to this day. Each Cayman cake is handcrafted and made with love from our family to yours. Today we honor this tradition with our Cayman rum cake, exclusively made in Cayman, exclusively sold in Cayman. A Cayman tradition to be proud of. your ninth ranked Hokies are up four, but for Tulane right now, it comes down to Hannah Pratt. She had 15 points in yesterday's game. She has 11 after the first quarter. 
She has been so productive for the two-lane green wave. Coming out, hitting three threes already, three of four, attacking the glass, great follow and finish. And this is exactly what Tulane needs. She is carrying over from the game yesterday. Right now, I'd be very curious to see Marta Golich, Whittington, some other players get going offensively. Marta Golich had a day that we don't seem to see from her. She was just three of 15 yesterday, excuse me, three of 13 from the field. This is the leading scorer for Tulane and just did not, no, excuse me, second leading scorer, but she did not have the day that we expected. How about Hannah Pratt? She only had one game this season against Prairie View where she scored in single digits. That was nine points. Season high 17 and well on her way to pass that. Whittington, top of the key, bit strong. And Hannah Pratt is not stopping. Gets her hand on the ball. Inside look, a nice execution just knocked away. Tulane able to retrieve it. Golich, short on the shot. Yeah, and that's a different look that we're seeing from Golic too. We saw a little bit more of that burst yep. from her yesterday. Yep, there's some hesitancy in her right now. Hesitancy in her shot, but going back to that play, beautifully executed. They got what they wanted out of it, just could not finish. X, top of the key, no good. With Liz Kitley out, I'd be curious to see if, if Tulane can get into the paint, and Whittington does and finishes. How solid is Kyron Whittington when it, she gets her shoulder square to the rim? And it, her body is just, you know, she almost looks like a post player in terms of her physique and how strong she is. She's clearly put in so much time in the weight room and that has helped develop her game and made her a very difficult matchup. The last two possessions, Tulane has actually done a good job with working the shot clock under 10 again in Golich. That's more of the look that we're, yep. we're used to seeing, accustomed to seeing as she ties this ball game at 19. Yeah, finally gets that to fall, but you see a lot of action inside that paint because Liz Kitley has been out on those last few possessions. Now, of course, she is at the timeline and will enter as soon as we have a stop play. Eck outside, short, and a offensive foul will go against and I believe that Samaya Suffren on the baseline that will be called for the foul. Kyron Whittington, the player we highlighted coming into this game, gets the ball screen, the hezzy, goes all the way to the bucket and off the glass. Again, the paint has been open, but you've got to think about what that means about Liz Kitley and who she is, right? Just her presence off the floor allowed Tulane to play a completely different offense. Now she's back and it's gonna be difficult to get a score inside. Two seasons ago, the transfer from Louisiana Monroe, Kyron Whittington now leading the team in scoring and steals through the first five games. Well, actually the first four games yesterday, we did see Anna Pratt. That was a big part of their offense yesterday. And I think that's so important because this is a team in Tulane that lost over half of their scoring percentage from last season. And so the transfers that they brought in and Hannah Pratt being one of those has been so important to this Tulane team. The freshmen also have done a good job and you know, that's what Lisa Stockton has been so good at is creating a team within her system. Talk about that production that they lost. They lost 40, 47 actually percent wow. of their scoring. 39% of it's rebounding. So when you're looking at that as well, who is gonna be able to step up? Replacing their top scorer in Dinah Jones, who was a double figure scorer, and also Rachel Hakes, that led an assist. So after the two free throws, the Green Wave had the lead, and Kenny Brooks is just looking for an answer from his bench. And that's the third foul now, and Olivia Samuel stayed in that rebound too long, and looks like Carly Wenzel will check in for her. 
And after such a solid start, too, in the first quarter. By the way, just watching Liz Kitley in the paint, the work that she has to do to actually just, first of all, get in position, and then once she receives the ball with doubles coming is, is unbelievable. I don't think anybody knows what that takes in terms of just how mentally tough you have to be, how physically tough you have to be, and then go ahead and turn around and take a beautiful shot. I mean, she's just so talented. Talked about talent. Well, yeah. Whittington said you can drop my name in that hat as well. <laughs> well deserved, number zero. Looking good. Averaging 15 points on the season. Karen Whittington right now with four. Actually six on the update for our stats. And Farrell able to poke that away. Travel call at the top of the key for Pratt. That'll be the third for the Green Wave. And the finish inside, just so smooth. And mind you, Virginia went on their run when Kyron Whittington took a weird fall in the first quarter after she was trying to get the ball on the block. And as far as that sense of energy and urgency, it changed a little bit for Tulane, but having her on the floor, it's like having the light bulb yeah. in the lamp. Yeah, her presence and what she does, I think, defensively. She sets the tone on defense. And as I said earlier, Tulane got 10 steals in the game yesterday. And that generated a lot of their offense. And because of Kyron Whittington on the inside. Quick stop for Kayla King, but has struggled from outside. Now one for six from distance. Whittington finding wow. a lane, getting back to the bucket. And of course that will lead to a timeout for Virginia Tech. Kenny Brooks not pleased with how things have been opening up for Whittington at the rim. Uh, just the basketball IQ here. Watch the hesitation. She waits for her defense to come to her. And then, well, we saw her on the blow by instead, but the quick first step to get to the bucket, the lane opens up, great screen up top, allows Whittington to have some space and just doing a tremendous job from the point guard position. Empty calories just leave you feeling empty. Enough sucky sucking, more power sipping. Jam packed with whole fruits, organic veggies, and super boosters. So, no bad stuff, only at Smoothie King. for its crystal clear waters, cool blue skies, and playful residents. Enjoy a variety of water sports including paddle boards, jet skis, and sailing. Swim with the stingrays, relax on a luxury catamaran, whatever your fancy, dive, sail, play with Red Sail Sports. Lisa Stockton has her team with a six point lead after the first frame and actually six minutes into the second quarter this is what their resume has looked like through this season three and two coming into this game and also picked to be six in the aac's preseason poll but i think going back to last year as well finished seven and nine in conference play reached the postseason for the third consecutive season with the birth to the wnit as well so this is just a culture and a team yeah. that is used to being in postseason and competing against top teams yeah and and i think coach stockton in particular just it really gives that sense of calm to her team because she's been there 30 years at Tulane. Nobody's playing 
scared. Everyone's playing loose. That's what she wanted. She wanted them to come into this tournament and play loose and play together. And we watched that. Obviously, it didn't, they didn't sustain it yesterday in the in their game. But wow, have they done a great job? And a and a kick there by Joy Madison Key, one of the great freshmen for Tulane, and she will exit the game. Yeah, it took a very awkward call. We saw in that last clip trying to work it out. You see her stretching and flexing the left leg. She has a smile on her face, which yeah. looks like it's optimistic, so right. we're just hoping for the best. <laughs> Elizabeth Kitley seeing the double team from the block. Goes to her patent fadeaway, and there's not much you can do about that. No. It is an almost impossible shot to block because of how high she keeps the ball on the release and the separation from the step back. Makes it a four point game. Whittington looking for something on the block. Has the look away, goes baseline yep. against Georgia Amore and that's a tough assignment. Yeah, the one second that Georgia Amor shifted trying to get over the screen that was coming. Whittington saw it and adjusted and went baseline for the finish. Kayla King has struggled from outside. One for six. Olivia Samuel off the mark. Tracks her own miss and cleans it up. Uh, that's what she gives you. Samuel with three fouls and still playing like she's got none. Attacking the offensive glass. Wow, has she been a bright spot for Virginia Tech. Still a four point game. Green Wave have the advantage and Golich almost mishandling it out of bounds, is able to retrieve it. Working top of the key, interior pass and that's bounced off the leg of Mabry. Great look, I love the high low look. Just misplaced pass. And Kyron Whittington, watch, the second that Georgia Amor adjusts, thinking the screen is coming, and the change of speed allows Whittington to get there untouched. Here's Baker in the game for the Hokies as well, as that one is knocked down by Elizabeth Kitley. I, the Coach Brooks talks about this a lot, and it is so refreshing just to see the humility that Liz Kitley plays with. She dropped 31 yes. yesterday. There's not a showboat part. Not that that's bad. I'm just saying, like, she just, she does it quietly. She's like, this is my job. This is what I do. I mean, that's a tough shot. Yeah. She is taking step back. She is getting through all kinds of people just grabbing her arms, turns around, hits the jumper like it's nothing. I think another thing you have to look at in her game is that she creates a space with the jab yep. in her release. Yeah. It's so high. Yep. And already for Elizabeth Kitley standing at 6'6", you have to find a way to make up that room reaching in, yeah. which is so impressive if you're looking at how she uses that to her advantage. Yep. And that's where I'd love to see UCLA and nice shot there by Georgia Amor, but you think about Lauren Betts, who stands at 6'7". I'd love to see that and see what it what that matchup would be like with somebody who surpasses her in, in height, has an incredible reach as well. Right. I'd love to see those two be able to play. Maybe we'll, we'll, we'll see that in an NCAA tournament down the road. Hokies have the momentum right now. 3.23 left in the first half. We have a tie ball game after that shot from Georgia Amor. Kitley rolls in off the baseline. Has a one-on-one -on -one coverage and that is money every day. Yeah, the second that she is open and you do not bring a second defender down to try to take that ball away, you're almost guaranteed that she's going to score. Her shooting percentage, 59% from the field. And there is a triple. Marta Golich getting one to fall from long distance. Shooting close to 35% from the three-point line and an illegal screen at the top of the key. That's going to go against Elizabeth Kitley. I do believe that is her first foul. Am 
Marta Galic, we highlighted her yes in yesterday's game, did not come up with the points that she wanted to, just one of five from the three-point line, but she is starting to get hot early in this one, and she, Hannah Pratt, Kyron Whittington, that three person punch for Tulane has really made things tough for Virginia Tech. Joy Madison Key able to check back in for the green wave as another triple knockdown. This one coming from Amira Mabry. She Surprise! Yeah, that's right. Amira Mabry was the name we said over and over in yesterday's game against UVA. Came into that one off the bench. Nine points, nine boards. So efficient and making Virginia Tech have to guard her outside now. But she didn't have any three-point attempts yesterday. Only hit one three on the season. Knocks down her second for the year. Travel on the inside by Nishaw. Tulane's doing it on defense right now. They are getting stops. And here is the three-point look. You don't come out and guard me. I'm going to take it. Great finish for Mabry. Looks like some other Mabrys I know. <laughs> more Notre Dame jerseys, right? Good you last name. <laughs> it's a great last name. You gotta you be wanna... a shooter. Absolutely. Joy covers, covering both of oh. them and wishing them all the best too. I know injuries were coming into play as well, so. Yep. But some of the best footwork, quick release you can find in women's basketball. And just incredible. Elizabeth Kitley was held on the block, and you can see her having the conversation with Matilda Eck as well on the receipt. I love that, because that is what she is there to do. Matilda Eck, new into this program, has never probably played with the kind of scorer that Liz Kitley is, a transfer from Michigan State. But you, as a post player, you got to tell your guards where you want the ball and when. He's only dropping one game on the season. That was earlier this year to Iowa. Iowa was ranked number three in the country at that point. Less than a minute to play. A spin move on the inside, and Hannah Pratt mishandles it, calls the turnover. And sometimes that can happen. When you're having a great game and your confidence is high, maybe you start forcing things. The sets for Tulane have been excellent. I go back to screen and rolls, double screen away for a shooter, look high, low. That's what's been working for you. Matilda Eck collided with about two players on the block for the green wave. Draws the foul, it was on the pass out, however, a foul. We'll send her to the free throw line because now they're in the bonus. Matilda Eck, not just a three-point shooter, driving inside, few bodies collide. And Matilda Eck now with a chance at the foul line. Call that more of a spear. <laughs> Bodies definitely down in the paint. Matilda Eck, the transfer from Michigan State. Native of Sweden. They played for the Swedish national team as well. Pokies down two. Tulane shooting 44% from the field, 38% from the three point line, and the Hokies have an opportunity to tie here as we close out the first half. They missed Hannah Pratt on that initial post up, but great block in there by Kitley. We'll see who they get it to. Kitley on the inside. Kayla Keene calling her a number, and that sailed out of bounds as Virginia Tech will go to the locker room after the first half. Down by two to the Tulane Greenway. 
an excellent first half by Tulane. We saw this yesterday against Virginia Tech, but the second quarter, they started to fall apart. We're seeing a much more complete game from the Tulane Green Wave. Virginia Tech, a lot of things to discuss at halftime. They've got to figure out how to isolate the players that they want to touch the ball a lot more. Liz Kitley, though, doing an excellent job. Two players in double figures for both sides with Elizabeth Kitley and Olivia Sumiel as well in 10. But for right now, the Tulane Green Wave have really excelled from the three-point line, locking down five triples. Virginia Tech, just two for 12, 16% from long range. We'll see if that's an adjustment for Kenny Brooks and Hokies when we come back.
And first off, I want to say thank you so much for allowing me to speak with you and the amazing audience that you guys have. Personally, this is, is a wonderful thing for me because I'm an avid basketball fan myself. But obviously, having this Cayman Classic and having the teams that are here with their amazing followers and fans um, is beneficial to the Cayman Islands because not only do we get the coaches, the assistants, and the players come to experience our product and, and our um, restaurants and our hotels and our scenery and our environment, but we also get the fan base that comes along. Um, this year we have the women for the first time and that's pretty awesome, um, I think, because the, the women basketball um, groupings have grown more and more and you can see that in the, the numbers, particularly with the WNBA, um, and I see that over the next decade it's going to grow even more. So it's time for the women to shine and I'm so glad about that. This classic has also helped us with our local community. We have a strong basketball following here in Cayman. A lot of young people who want to, to, to be able to become basketball players, but they don't ever get the opportunity unless they travel to the United States to see that top tier level of, of athleticism. So we love the fact that we can bring them here and show what NCAA can offer. Um, and our kids are inspired by that. So. The Cayman Classic has truly grown within our community. Basketball courts are being built all over our island now. The business community is supporting it heavily. So I think basketball is going to be a big part of our future here in the Cayman Islands. You know, when people go away, they want a number of things. They want safety, they want quality service, they want reputable brands um, with accommodations. Obviously, they want a wonderful environment and they want kind people and amazing food because you got to eat, right? And we score either an A or an A plus in all of those. Um, and I think that that's what distinguishes us amongst the rest. Now, we don't produce a lot of things in the Cayman Islands other than kindness and smiles. And so we make sure that we keep focus on the little small stuff that people appreciate so their memories can last forever. And I know you've probably heard this before, but the Cayman Islands is the number one culinary capital of the Caribbean. Um, so we have different restaurants with different palates. Um, and when people spend their money in our economy, you know, they keep our people employed and, you know, the government makes revenue through, through the various taxes. And besides the, the economics of things, what we love the most is memories. We're a very kind set of people. We feel so proud when somebody says, man, I love the Cayman Islands. It gives us joy particularly whenever I travel, oh, I've been to the Cayman Islands, it's so nice. That, that's really what we're all about. We going down the road, hands in the air, people everywhere, love and unity is here. It's that time of year, where we don't care. It don't matter where you're from, put your flag in the air. Those empty calories just leave you feeling empty. Enough sucky sucking, more power sipping. Jam-packed with whole fruits, organic veggies, and super boosters. So, no bad stuff, only at Smoothie King.
matter where you're from, put your flag in the air. I represent, represent. Just one love, just one love, just one love, just one love. Yes, we wish you were here too. <laughs> what a beautiful shot of the Cayman Islands. The only thing missing actually is us in those beach chairs. Oh, but we'll, it's coming. we'll trade in those chairs for these chairs on the inside of the John Gray Gymnasium as Olivia Samuel has been the answer for them and the spark for the Virginia Tech Hokies in the first half. Oh, and they needed it desperately. Liz Kitley doing what she does inside, but to have a four player come in and take some relief off of Liz Kitley has been huge. And the way, it's not just been her scoring, it's been the way she's attacked the glass and getting on the basket. Liz Kitley, just exactly what you expect. 12 points, six boards already in the first half of this game. Hitting her step back, getting lots of contact inside before she gets the ball, but she's been impressive. Tulane has been impressive. With the lead in this first half, many of those shots have come from the three-point line. Five of 13 in this game. And with the help of Kyron Whittington, the player we highlighted at the top of this game, she has been everything as advertised. Coming off the screen, getting to the rim, the hesitation, off the glass. She is a player that changes who Tulane is when she's on the floor. And she was actually off the floor to end that second quarter of play. So I think they'll be ready for her to get going on the defensive end as well as on the offensive end. 
Hey, before we get things going, let's take a look at the tail of the tape and specifically with the paints and the point. That was something that you noticed right away. Yeah, 16 points for Tulane. And, you know, Virginia Tech, of course, that team that we expect to have so many points in the paint. But again, we talked about it yesterday. Kitley sometimes will shoot outside the paint. She'll hit the 15 footer, not necessarily inside, but uh, other players have done it. But Tulane has been great. Their high low action has actually been very um, effective for them. Virginia Tech starting off with the ball, an early turnover. Trying to get the ball to Elizabeth Kitley and not the way that Kenny Brooks wanted to start off the half. If Irina Perot only is in the game to give pressure to Liz Kitley, then she's done her job. She doesn't have to score a single point in this game because she will have effectively defended her. Offer shot for Hannah Pratt, trying to get to the middle. Kayla King as well has struggled from outside. One for seven, has three points. He did hit the early triple as Georgia Amor. So able to knock that one down and tie it up. And at the break, Angel, you and I were talking about the fact that Georgia Amor's got to find her shots yeah. in order to relieve pressure from the inside. And because she's, this is a big part of who she is. She's a point guard. Yes, she distributes, but she can create her own shot better than maybe, I mean, she's top five, in my opinion, in the league, in, er, in the NCAA, in terms of finding her own shot, creating it, and figuring out how she can get points on the board. Whittington with one on the shot clock, and that's blocked. Actually, a great series. So stringing that together, Georgia Amor with the bucket on one end, and a defensive stop. Olivia Samuel, a big part of that as well. Yeah, and you wonder what Kenny Brooks said at that halftime speech. He was not pleased with the way his team came out. And remember again, they had the second to the last game yesterday, so they had to turn around and play an early game. And even though the game started at 11, nice finish there for Tulane. They're, they've got to be in the gym much earlier than that and up and ready and, and getting into game prep. They'll also be leaving right after the game. We have a quick turnaround for another tough assignment as Georgia Amor, top of the key, didn't have the legs there, so you do wonder if that does come into play. It was a tough game, as you alluded to, just edging Kansas at the last second of the ball game. Actually, Kansas had an opportunity to take the lead. Actually, get a game winner with 5.7 seconds left, just a botched last play. Yeah, it was a disappointing finish for Kansas. They want that one back. They'll have a great test today. Uh, but the finish for Whittington inside, crossover. Uh, and we can't say enough about her skill set, both with the ball in her hands and then on the defensive side of things. Yeah, if you're looking at um, Whittington as well, what I like about what she does is that her eyes are selling in another way as yeah. well. Yeah, that's a great point. I think it's what allows her to to let her defender take one pause and she takes advantage and uses her quickness to, to get the first step. Inside look, that's poked away. Actually, Golich reaching in will get the foul. Number three, Just her first. Yeah. Olivia Samuel on the bench right now as far as foul trouble, the only player with over three fouls, so she has four. Whittington, the touchdown pass from the top of the key from Kayla Rainey. What a beautiful QB pass to find Whittington, who is out on the run. I'd love to see more of that from Tulane. That found the bottom of the net. Yeah, just a little space is all she needs and forces Rainey into a turnover. Too many steps. Georgia Amor, we're already seeing the spark from her in this second half. Look at that. The fake down into Liz Kitley was all the space Georgia Amor needed. Gets the screen at the top of the key, pulls again, short on Madison. Rolls back out. Kayla King turns, loads up, knocks it down. Well, we knew it wouldn't be long until Virginia Tech started playing at their potential. This is a team 
Now remember, Final Four last year, yes, they lost some components to that, but they reloaded in the transfer portal. Carly Wenzel, who was a redshirt freshman last year, or she's a redshirt, excuse me, this year, a true freshman last year. She has been excellent off the bench as well. These were hard to come by in the first half, but a three dropped in for Kayla King. And based off of our stats, it says that right now Virginia Tech one for three from the distance, but we just saw Georgia Amor as well as Kayla King knocking down the triple, so that's something a lot different than we saw in the second quarter where they went 0 for 4. Dalek responds with the 15 foot. Dalek, such a pure shooter. She is really difficult defensively to match up against because of her size and her length. And she scores at all three levels. Just really, really good for Tulane. Three players around Liz Kitley. She, this is not just like a single occasion. She has to contend with this every single time she touches the ball. It, it, it takes, and think about the physical energy that it takes just to hold position. Three defenders around her, and they get the foul. Liz Kitley is, probably does not get enough recognition for what she has to do even before she gets the basketball. Yeah, now going to the bench is Kyron Whittington. She has three fouls. How quick was Tulane to the ball knowing that they have to keep the ball out of her hands, even off the dribble? You know that's the scouting report as Georgia Amor gets yet another three to fall from the corner off the baseline out of bounds play. Yeah, she's taking this game into her own hands at this point. And you love seeing that from your point guard. Kenny Brooks and Georgia Amor have a very special and close relationship. And he does not mind coaching her to a level that he thinks she can be at. He, she is an extension of Kenny Brooks. Georgia Amor had two points at half, already with nine, so seven in this half. Two triples. Kayla King. Door. Great look for Mabry and great delivery by Perot. Well, I love the set because you bring in up six foot six Liz Kidley to have to defend Perot on the top and it leaves the paint wide open. So a little bit too much contact for Gollich. That will bring us to a media, but not before this beautiful pass to Mabry. Yeah, Mabry, the bright spot for Tulane in yesterday's game. Doing a great job as well. Liz Kitley up top, cannot defend inside. You lose your paint protector, and you get easy shots inside. empty calories just leave you feeling empty enough sucky sucking more power sipping jam-packed with whole fruits organic veggies and super boosters so no bad stuff only at smoothie king known for its crystal clear waters cool blue skies and playful residents enjoy a variety of water sports including paddle boards jet skis and sailing Swim with the stingrays, relax on a luxury catamaran, whatever your fancy, dive, sail, play with Red Sail Sports.
you can be in the Cayman Islands and not have an opportunity to do these incredible excursions. Look at Tulane, really soaking in the sun, having some fun I during this it. tournament. Also playing some great basketball yeah. that we talked to Coach Stockton, and she said, we're going to go on a boat cruise. And she said, that's my first love. She's got a boat in Tulane and loves to get out on the water. And then she said, and then I am going, not with the team, but I myself. And I think that's going to happen today after this early game. She is going to go ride horses on the beach with family. How fun is that going to be? She said, horses and boats, my first and second love. Her basketball's in there as well, right? I'm pretty sure it is. When you have 645 wins under your belt, you can do yeah, you can. those nice yeah. things. <laughs> <laughs> the ball is in your court, Coach. As she should. <laughs> Pratt didn't need any time, but just left to the rim. Hey, Tulane with the one-point edge over the number nine ranked Hokies as we're under the halfway point in the third quarter. Georgia Amore has come alive in the second half. She's now in double figures. But the big part of it is Olivia Samuel on the bench right now with 4,000. She had the hot hand to start the ball game. And there's the double on Kitley. And the key to the double is you got to double and not foul. And you got to make it hard for Kitley to pass out of it. They don't. And Matilda Eck takes advantage. You know, you got to credit Kenny Brooks, too, for how he's established and really put this roster together. Yeah. If Kitley is going to have people on her on the block, she has to have people that she can kick it to as well. Said like a true guard who could score, Angel Gray. <laughs> <laughs> that was more of a practice. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that's so true. There's no way Kenny Brooks is bringing in a guard that cannot score at a high clip. He is, that's all about who, who he is. That's why we were so confused yesterday when only three threes went in for Virginia Tech. That's not their game. And Kenny Brooks was very uh, upfront with us when we had that conversation with him afterward that you know we did not play some great basketball. We're lucky to get away with a win today. We've had 10 lead changes, five ties in this ball game, including this one. Blocked at 45, Kitley baseline fade away, get that one to go. That's, I think, the most deadly of her shots when she's on the block. That's why, you know, we can go back to points in the paint. She's not in the paint, right? She's just outside of it. And Arena Brow trying to get her out of position so that she can make it a more difficult shot, but there's, there's no spot that's too difficult for Kitley. Mabry, long two, and a displacement from Kayla King as Bollock went after the old board. They're doing all of this right now in the third quarter. Most of the time has been without Tyron Whittington, who is on the bench with three fouls. Uh, and eventually, you know, I wonder at what point Coach Stockton feels like she can bring her back in because of what she brings on the defensive end in particular. Yeah. Pratt held up by Elizabeth Kitley. Great contest. Adderin Mabry is able to pull it down. Pratt outside, three, drains it. Amira Mabry may be one of my favorite players at the tournament. Like, one of those players that nobody really focuses on, but what she's done for her team. She gets the offensive board and then finds the shooter. I love it. Not to be confused with Marina Mabry That's for right. the Dallas <laughs> Well, actually, now it's which team, so. We know everyone, in right? Chicago, everyone in, yeah. the, in, in the WNBA knows Marina Mabry. Marina Mabry, now in Chicago, and then Dara Mabry, her sister, actually spent time at Notre Dame as well. Kayla King connects from outside for a triple. Wow. That was 10 feet off the line. So a timeout call for Elisa Stockton as she can feel this one. And the momentum for the Hokies starting to get things going offensively. Great timeout for Tulane. I'd love to see Karen Whittington getting into the lineup. It doesn't look like she's going to the timeline, but gets the pass. No offense needs to be run when you've got Kayla King hitting like that from long range. Those empty calories just leave you feeling empty. 
Enough sucky sucking, more power sipping. Jam packed with whole fruits, organic veggies, and super boosters. So, no bad stuff, only at Smoothie King. For over 35 years, Tortuga has baked their original rum cake in Cayman. From our kitchens in our homes to exporting across the world, Proudly Bacon Cayman has always been at the heart of everything we do. Our recipe, handed down by six generations, has remained a secret to this day. Each Cayman cake is handcrafted and made with love from our family to yours. Today we honor this tradition with our Cayman rum cake, exclusively made in Cayman, exclusively sold in Cayman. A Cayman tradition to be proud of. Steel drums are a thing if you're at the Cayman Islands Classic. We're excited to have such a great time with the locals here that have been very kind to us, welcoming us with open arms. It's been so much fun being here for the Cayman Islands and great basketball as well. We have a great game on hand as well between Tulane and Virginia Tech kickstarting everything for today. The Hokies will be flying out right after the game. They have a tough assignment. Their next game is in the next few days against LSU, so a couple of Coaches we've seen from LSU yeah. staying on hand and get get the scout. We'll see for, uh, LSU later on today. Yeah, and you know, just going back to how great this tournament has been, I think it'll be hard. We saw the Hokie fans in the gym, and so many fans have followed these teams here. I don't know if anyone's going to enjoy a Thanksgiving anymore in the States. After you had <laughs> spent one in the Cayman Islands, on the water, these beautiful beaches, and, and we've heard Cayman kind a lot, Cayman and kind. we can attest to that. Wonderful, wonderful people here. College out of the timeout was able to get the ball on the inside, draws a foul, she gets two free throws. And Kyron Whittington does indeed come back into the game. So Elizabeth Kitley picks up her second personal. Golich at the free throw line. This is her second trip to the free throw line and actually there have only been four free throws before this one for Tulane to this point in the ball game. Not a lot of fouls called within this as well, yeah. or at least not at the rim because overall only three free throws for Virginia Tech wow. as well. And you know, I probably like the more physical game, so I love when the officials don't call a lot of fouls. I yeah. love when they let teams play. Now, of course, you have to protect some people. And Liz Kelly, I think, could, right there, like that, that could be a foul to me. Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> so you, you got to call those, right? I mean, she's hugging her inside the paint. I think she stepped out of bounds. The official happened to be in the right spot to call that one. Had that call a couple of times in the tournament already. have some displacement on the block as Dolich was thrown down to the ground. I think this is going to go against Elizabeth Kitley, which is her third. And again, that, I, mean, I will say, Tulane scouted this very well. Yeah. They, they know exactly what Virginia Tech has done and, uh, or what they're going to do in their sets. And that screen up for Liz Kitley, they were bumping. Two players bumped her off her path to the block and actually just did a very good job of making sure she didn't get the ball. Liz Kitley obviously frustrated inside because as I said, she's getting hammered. She really is. And and the officials haven't called those. Kitley able to come in for the rebound. Less than a minute to play. We have to talk about that stuff that you mentioned for Tulane. 
Might I remind you, when UConn used to be in the American Athletic Conference for a short spell, they were one of the teams that actually gave them the toughest time and almost had an upset against UConn as well. So this is a, a team and a staff that understands how to make it hard on ranked opponents. Now that's where you go back to the longevity that Coach Stockton has and how well she knows the game of basketball and how she teaches it to her kids. Less than 30 seconds on the game clock. Approaching the 10 second mark on the shot clock. Mabry sends it to the corner, Whittington. Perot going at Kitley, gets the angle just over the rim. So that will do it for the shot clock. Time on the clock for Kayla King on the other end. Spins around, thought that was gonna go down. 8.2 left on the game clock as Kayla King will see two free throws. Great run out by King. The Rebound, Karam's off, and Amor actually with the tip to help the fast break. And Kayla King, I did think that was going in as well, would have been a huge boost for the Virginia Tech faithful who have traveled to watch the Hokies and have been great fans. And have showed up at Castle Coliseum in the last few years yeah. to support their Hokies as they continue to ascend. And that is so much fun when, when to play against, you remember this, to play against a crowd that is cheering for you, is faithful, and you know, it is, there's nothing like it. So with a foul on that play against Winnington in the final seconds of this third quarter, there was a foul that is gonna send her to the free throw line because that now puts them in the bonus. And another foul there on Kayla King, just her second. But you never like that, right? When time is just about to go off the clock, those are the things that, you know, as coaches, you, you want to make sure don't happen. Allow for two potential points to go on the board. So the officials go to the monitor, and I'm assuming that they are looking at how much time is going to be back on the clock. But whatever they are seeing on their monitor, I am told that we can see the same thing. So hopefully we will be able to see what they put back and actually we are told by our producer Lucas Haskin that it is 1.1 being put back on the clock. And so coming off the ball screen and Kayla King, some contact there, not a ton, but the officials see enough. All right, Whittington knocks down the first of the pair. She'll get another one to make it a five-point game. Still just a two-possession game, and no one has had a leader, a lead that has been more than seven points in this ballgame. Three frames down, and Tulane is down five points to the ninth rank. Virginia Tech Hokies will see how they can close it out, but Georgia Amor has been huge in the second half. Well, she was the player we highlighted to start this game. She only had two points in the first half, came out in the second, a whole different player. This is the Georgia Amor we've come to love. The scoring, the screening, the passing. Georgia Amor looking good. empty calories just leave you feeling empty enough sucky sucking more power sipping jam-packed with whole fruits organic veggies and super boosters so no bad stuff only at smoothie king for its crystal clear waters, cool blue skies, and playful residents. 
Enjoy a variety of water sports including paddle boards, jet skis, and sailing. Swim with the stingrays, relax on a luxury catamaran, whatever your fancy. Dive, sail, play with Red Sail Sports. Well, if you're enjoying the Cayman Islands Classic, then be sure to check out theflowloop.com for exclusive content and post game interviews. Join the conversation at Flowloop on all social media platforms. College Truth tips off here, right here on Flow Hoop. And this is your free game for today, which I did not know about, which is really exciting because I didn't have to give my password to my sister. There you go. <laughs> what a great opportunity. You love this. You got to get that subscription because Absolutely. a lot of great basketball being played on this channel and Flow Hoops. It's the way to watch some basketball and you are getting some great basketball with the Virginia Tech Hokies top 10 team and Tulane trying to pull the upset. Yeah, there's not a better tournament going on right now than right here in the Cayman Islands. That's right. Women's basketball. Pratt. Top of the key knocks it down. Pratt. Now with 16 points, just one shy of matching her season high. And a one possession game, and that's where you go back to those free throws at the end of the quarter. That's why fouling or not fouling is so important, and Georgia Amor will come up with that foul. I thought she was pretty set in place, right? But the official on the baseline says otherwise. Three-point game, and they can tie it here on this possession. Whittington coming off the screen, short on the layup. You say Kitley is hovered. How about Georgia Amor every time she touches the ball at this point? Now she'll see Whittington, and that's a good reason why she was on the bench yeah. with the three fouls, because she has to have this assignment. And look at the way she's gotten. Oh, she goes over the last two screens, that time underneath. But her defense has been great until that. Yeah, you go underneath, you get too much space, and Georgia Amor knocks down yet another triple on the day. So that'll be three for five for Georgia Amor as she moves to 15 points after just having two in the first half. Yeah, that's what makes her so dangerous is, yes, you think she's trying to distribute, but no, girl can take her own whenever she wants it. And an answer, though, outside, Kyron Whittington, my goodness, we talked a lot about her, def about her defense, but her long range ball has been looking good as well. Now I let you shine for yesterday with your front court players. Yeah, so they were know, good, they, but the, the back court today I think and yesterday good. really showing out. You're so. gonna see that on my players to watch, only one front court player <laughs> by the way. We, we were disappointed in a few, but I'll tell you, your guards, Angel Gray, they're looking good. Olivia Samuel might work under your yeah, game plan as she's been electric so far. Continues to build on her season high. 13 points for Samuel. Wow. Rainey dropping down the triple. And Tulane trying to use this to their advantage, gaining some energy off of the three. Kayla King responding as well. Can't get one to drop, and that'll be a foul on Kitley on the reach-in. I do believe that is going to be her fourth foul of the day. Now, we're just trading buckets here in Cayman Islands. The step back, nothing. Kayla King wide open. That's a lot of space to give a great shooter. And then the crossover gets Georgia Amor to fall back on defense. And Rainey, another transfer that has done such a good job. Northwestern, Kayla Rainey, along with the other transfer, Hannah Pratt, is they have added so much to this two-lane team. How about nine triples so far for the Hokies after just knocking down two yesterday? Thrilling game down the stretch against Kansas where they edged him by one. Whittington lost her footing but is able to draw the foul on the way up. And I do believe that's going to go against Georgia Amor. Tulane has not backed down. They're not scared of a top 10 ranking. They're not looking at a number that's before the Virginia Tech line. They are playing their style of basketball, which is gritty, tough, starts on defense, 
and very much together. A lot of different players stepping up for Tulane. Four more conference pros, as we mentioned at the top of the show. But also, Lisa Stockton being in the ACC, played for Wake Forest. Still a school record as well as 97 straight games where she started. I would say she was definitely a baller with them and set program records for, check this out, Kelly, points, assists, steals, and minutes played. Unbelievable. Yeah, I think she knows this game. I think she might know the game pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> One point game after those two free throws knocked down by Kyron Whittington. Kyron Whittington right now at 21 points leads the way for Tulane. She was 8 of 10 from the free throw line in yesterday's game. A lethal crossover by Georgia Amor. Wanted the contact on the wrist. Politely asked the official, you didn't see anything there? Oh, that was very kind of her. It was, it was so the nicest nicely. way it was. <laughs> I think that I've ever seen it, yeah. She's like, would you mind, in her Australian accent, would you mind calling that next time? <laughs> Pratt didn't need to ace. Just short, and you could tell right away. Pratt just wants the ball in her yeah. hand. She doesn't care about any defender in front of her. Yeah, her confidence is at a level 10 right now. Georgia Amor actually gets that call as that one comes across the arm. Kayla Rainey, I do believe, makes the foul there, and that'll be her third. Well, Kayla Rainey goes over the top of the screen, which you have to do uh, against Georgia Amor. Trails behind her and tries to get that tip and instead just hits the hand. Georgia Amor was perfect from the free throw line coming into this tournament. Misses that one there as we have a substitution for Joy Madison Key checking in. She'll come in for Rainey. So the freshman from Overland Park, Kansas, excuse me, from Granite Prairie, Texas, checks in. He's played 12 minutes in this game, hasn't scored yet. Makes a great pass to Whittington, though, who goes up and is fouled again. Another trip to the free throw line. She is perfect from there right now, four of four from the line. Remember when we were talking about the lack of free throws that we saw within the game? Well, now we're seeing 11 and 12 wow. as far as the free throws for Tulane. Knocks down the first. The next one can tie. 6.09 left in the fourth quarter. What has been the difference right now for Tulane? You mentioned yesterday a strong start, and there may be a violation called on Virginia Tech, so she'll get another one actually at the free throw line. And Rose Michaud into the lane on that one. So she knocks that one down, ties it at 63. The difference you've seen in two lane today. I'm going to say it's been their commitment on the defensive level. Yes, Liz Kitley has gotten shots. Yes, in the second half, Georgia Amor has. But in general, their communication, the way they have navigated screens, they don't on that one. Joy Madison Key just gets nailed by the screen and gives Amor a wide open look. But we haven't seen that in the game. Everything has been contested. They have doubled Kitley well inside. And, you know, I'd be curious right now, especially with Kitley out of the game. Yeah, you got to go inside. Would you think that the inside presence would be Kyron Whittington, yeah. though? <laughs> right. Kyron Whittington, 5'9", as the low post. Here's the screen. Good job by Amor to set it up and go shoulder to shoulder. And just Joy Madison Key gets nailed, does not see it coming. And that, that can happen, right, when you're a freshman. You're, you, these upperclassmen are really paying attention to the scouting report. You've got to know what's coming. and. And sometimes just one look to the side will, will uh, get you out of place and Virginia Tech takes full advantage. So the missed free throw doesn't tie the ball game back up, but Tulane in the bonus with 5.30 left in the fourth quarter. And with the way they're shooting free throws, that's good. Samuel outside.
Good job by Mishaw to stay active on the offensive glass and gets her team another possession. Rose Mishaw, Kenny Brooks just mentioning how losing some very key pieces on the defensive end. Kiana Trailer, Taylor Soul, a very solid defender. She's gonna have to be one of those players that steps up in that, that space. And again, Mishaw trying to get the offensive glass and it goes into the hands of Tulane instead, but that's what you want. And there, the long pass inside the Mabry, but it gets blocked. Yeah. Great contest by Mishaw. On the inside, one point game, less than five minutes in the fourth quarter. How long can Liz Kittley stay on the bench? Georgia Amor, when you have her on your team, you can stay as long as yeah. you want, taking over this ball game for the Hokies. Georgia Amor now at 20 points, only had two in the first half. And then? And on the floor for the tie-up. That'll go to the Hokies as they have the possession. And don't just think she is a point guard who distributes. The Australian native creates her own, takes her own, and then does a great job on the defensive end and locks down whoever she's guarding. Look at her, the quick hands. Goes for the tie-up. Virginia Tech needed that desperately. They're trying to win this one against a tough Tulane team. Those empty calories just leave you feeling empty. Enough sucky sucking, more power sipping. Jam packed with whole fruits, organic veggies, and super boosters. So, no bad stuff, only at Smoothie King. Virginia Tech has the three-point edge over to Lane as we're 436 left in this fourth quarter. Georgia Amore has put her stamp on this game. You know, the best part about her stat line right now, it's not the 20 points to me. It's actually the six, or excuse me, the three turnovers because she had that in the first half. She has not had a turnover in the second half. She has six assists to go along with that. Remember, we said early on, in two combined games, Georgia Amor, 21 points, one turnover. Yesterday, she had nine. That's not the production that we're used to seeing from her, but she something clicked in that second half, or in the locker room at least, and she's come out a totally different player and has helped her team maintain this lead against a very feisty Tulane club. I guess you, you also look at what she's been able to do. Elizabeth Kitley, your anchor on the inside, hasn't been able to be in this game for a substantial amount of time because of foul trouble. Sitting on the bench right now with 4.36 left. But when you have Georgia Amor, it's like, okay, yep. where can we go from here? Where's the leadership? And you know what you're going to get yes. from her every single time. Yeah, that's the benefit of being a, a player who's been in the system for a long time and she knows exactly what her head coach wants from her, Rosie Shaw. Just barely missed that one. Tulane now with an opportunity to potentially tie this game. And how many times have we said that today? <laughs> <laughs> 12 lead changes, seven ties. A lot of work on the inside by Mabry going against Rose Mishaw. And as we talked about earlier, that's what they need to do, establishing that because they are in the bonus. I think that Lisa Stockton has just found another star in Amira Mabry. I mean, she stands at, at six foot, and I think she's pushing it there. I, I mean, I, I'm not sure that it doesn't look it from here. Maybe she is, maybe I'm wrong. I'm 6'2", but I feel like I tower over her. However, she 
posts in the block like a 6'5 post player. Yeah. And she moves so well. And she has defended all her post players really well inside. Right now, she's playing George, uh, Rose Michal. So Rose Michal about 6'2". So if you want a depiction of what that looks like, yeah. I think you have it right there. <laughs> I think I got it. <laughs> a tie-up, that will go to Tulane. You tower over me. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. Looking at UCLA yesterday, I don't know if I've seen a bigger team. I mean, oh, it's yeah. been a long time since yeah. I've seen a team that with that much height. And I don't trust me, Lauren Betts, who stands yeah. at six seven, and actually Corey Close said she's probably taller than that. Yeah. We'll see them next. I'll tell you, the cleanup crew at John Gray Arena has been phenomenal. They are out there every time there's been somebody slipping on the floor. This crew yeah. is unmatched. Yep. We've, I mean, taken care of every single thing, yeah. all four games throughout the day, making sure everybody has the right accommodations, everybody's taken care of because of the humidity and the doors opening for yes. yesterday. They had to make sure that the, the floor was going to be dry for the players for so the first game is where that was only brought into question once. And to see it for today and how it's starting, I mean, this crew has definitely put on a yeah. great showing for some of the top talent in the country. I mean, Angel, we just had rum cake delivered to right. our station <laughs> here. I mean, could we ask for anything more? I don't think we can. Well, if we did, it'd come. Right? It would definitely come as we got these nice rolly chairs uh, to call our games in today as well. A timeout is called one point game with 310 left in the ball game, but it's been interesting to see how they're going to close this one out. Elizabeth Kitley, 16 points and eight rebounds. She does have the four fouls in the ball game for Virginia Tech, but has been solid throughout in the first half. Yeah, you know, she's done what we expect her to do. She's had to work hard to get position, and you got to credit Tulane's tough defense. Look at a lot of arms around her and double, triple teamed at times. I'll tell you what, you go single coverage, that's going to happen every single time. And look at this. I mean, it's just a highlight reel. Every time she touches the ball, she can step back. She's been working on the three-point shot. She made one earlier this season. And uh, it, it's going to be very nice for Virginia Tech to get her back on the floor because she sat out, tried to protect those fouls sitting at four right now. But she'll be needed for the last 310 of this game. Just very smooth, right? Just how she plays in rhythm. You can tell a player that works on their craft over and over and over again when it doesn't look they're, like they're rattled out of their movement. And I think that's repetition, doing it so many times. And this is, as Coach Kenny Brooks says, she, Liz Kelly is one of the hardest workers he's ever had the privilege to coach, constantly working on her game. Look at that. Her and eyes were closed, yeah, that's, by the way. That's not an easy shot. It looks easy because of how she does it, but it is not an easy shot. Probably learned a thing or two from proud papa dad, Ralph Kitley. Yes. Had a great career at Wake Forest. Perot going at Kitley on the right. Back at a one point game. Great look inside by Perot. I said she didn't have to score a point, right, to be effective in this game, but hey, not a bad time to be scoring points against the number eight team in the country, Virginia Tech. And comes up with a big box out on Kitley for the rebound. Here comes Rainey. Rainey sends it to Whittington. Guarded by Georgia Amor, almost lost her footing on the closeout, and a timeout will be called for Lisa Stockton. Well, I know you want me to talk about the backcourt, Angel, but I've got to go to that <laughs> front court because I love this matchup right now. Liz Kitley comes back in the game. What does she do? She scores. And then on the other side, look at this beautiful post play inside. The scoop, the finish over the 6-6 Liz Kitley and Irina Perot. She's not just a defender. She wants to remind everyone she can also score inside. 
I think it's the, it's the balance. And, and what you see for Lisa Stockton, too, is who's going to be able to step up. We've talked about so many different players down the line. Tyron Whittington, 24. Hannah Pratt, 16. You have four players in double figures. You're instilling and then the confidence that you need in order to be a balanced team. I mean, did, um, do they know right now they are under two minutes away from knocking off a top 10 team, potentially? I mean, it's, it's within their grasp right now. Not only a top 10 team this season, but yeah. a team that was in the final four last year. A travel call, so nice defense by Kayla King on Kyron Whittington, as that will be the 11th turnover for Tulane. Samuel, top of the key, gets it to go, and that might be the biggest bucket yeah. to this point. The defense was perfection for Tulane. Tulane made an adjustment and are now hedging high to try to get Georgia Amor off her line, but just that last second rotation gave Samuel enough time. Four-point game, Rainey off the mark. It's a scramble on the court. As we do have a tie-up, it will go to Virginia Tech. I mean, watch how great this defense is. So there's the double, right? And now the rotation. Quickly, Pratt, and then tries to get to Samuel. She doesn't make it. Samuel makes her pay. How big has Olivia Samuel been in this game? Coming off the bench, she has 16 points, third leading scorer. Three of five from long range. Has shattered her season high, had a combined six points before she came into this game today. Wow. Georgia Amor stepped back and that one a bit strong as we're in our final minute. Whittington at the rim gets it to go. We have a two-point game. Wow. That started with the rebound and the run by Whittington. Perot gives Whittington the quick pass. Wow. Excellent job. There is the quick kick out from Perot, who's in great position for the rebound, by the way. And then Whittington gets past everyone for an easy two. Wanted the foul as well. I thought that was going to be a call because there was a reach in on that layup as well against Whittington. Nonetheless, a two wow. point game, two Kelly. I mean, at this point, to kick things off I know. on the second day of the Cayman Islands Classic, we saw such great talent yesterday. Thrilling games to finish, especially for yesterday in the last two games. And now we get a gift of this. Yeah, and, and honestly, this just whets my appetite for what's to come. Yeah. I mean, we've got some great matchups on the line, and every game, I think, could have this kind of potential. Rainey containing Eck. No rebound. Huge by Olivia Samuel. Wow, and almost a steal by Whittington. But again, I mean, player of the game. <laughs> Absolutely. In terms of intangibles, Olivia Samuel right now, because you expect those other things from Georgia Amor and Liz Kitley, but Samuel's been the X factor. They do not have to foul here. And have four to give as well. Georgia Amor How? rolling that one in, making it a two possession game. How did she maintain possession of that basketball? Pratt outside, short, big rebound, eight to go, Pratt, top of the key, nothing called, that'll be going out of bounds, and Virginia Tech will get it back with 5.4 left in the ball game. Uh, the looks were there for Tulane, two good looks from the three-point line, a huge offensive rebound to keep possession, but can we just talk about the skill that is Georgia Amor? Splits the defense, somehow hangs onto the handle, and then the step back and the finish, what? 
what in the world? And then immediately it's like, get back on defense because right. we just got beat, right? I mean, she, <laughs> she's not celebrating. She's just, she's a point guard, right? She's the coach on the floor. Wow. Tulane with a great opportunity, had two good looks. Now they're gonna have to foul quickly. Yeah, not a lot of time left in this one. And even with them fouling, they'd have to give it up four times yep. because they only have one team foul in this quarter. Right. Yeah, that's that interesting situation where fouls go against, you know, the lack of fouling goes against you here. So, I imagine Kenny Brooks is not happy about the fact that Tulane had six players on the court, and instead of them starting the game, I think the official told one of them to go off the court. Wow. And I think he wanted, obviously, the technical, the technical. foul. Yeah. Which is correct. I'm with him. So, just the second foul. One sec came off the clock. This is a two possession game as well. Yeah, it'll have to be, if not, if it's not a quick steal, yep, right there. So two more to go. Mind you, you can't foul when the ball is not inbound, it's an automatic tech and they'll get the ball back after the free throw. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, the, the lack of fouls here, a few seconds can make and break this game, so. Unless they get a steal, well, now even then, that, it's still two possessions. I do believe Whittington is just fouled out of the game. I know that Rainey and Whittington had four before that final series. Just need an update as far as our notes. And there's five. Yeah. Yeah. Whittington fouling out of this game, the 26 points that she had on the day. Actually, one shy of her career high. She had 27 points against Georgia State back in last season. As Georgia Amor is at the free throw line. Drains both. Makes it still a two-possession game, but 2.5, there's not much time for you to do much nope. in this game. So Georgia Amor has really closed things for Virginia Tech. 24 points that she's been able to finish with in an outstanding second half performance. Yeah, I think we picked the right player at the top of this game to highlight. We didn't know it though. You wouldn't know it in the first half. Just two points heading into halftime, but she has been stellar in this one. 24 points to go along with five rebounds, seven assists and ends up with four turnovers for the day. Remember, just three at halftime, so just one in the second half. So really corrected and righted the ship. That was maybe my favorite move of the day, the split, split the defense, crossover and the finish, and, and that really solidified the win for Virginia Tech here. And I know I'm speaking ahead, but I, I don't know if Tulane can get enough here to win this game. Virginia Tech has battled twice now in the Cayman Islands. Yeah. And this will only better the team, right? Some bright spots because players like Olivia Sumiel and um, you know some other performers have stepped up. And Coach Brooks, that's what he wants to see from this team. I don't think this hurts. Even though in this field, you know that a team could have potentially lost two games. Yeah. But you're playing the best field that we've seen in a women's tournament yes. in quite some time. So I don't think for Tulane that this will hurt them but it will show on the committee just with the net and what it yes. looks like for the teams they've gone against as Virginia Tech will go on to be 5-1 and one for the season and Tulane will drop to 3-3. Three and three. I am incredibly impressed with what I watched today. Tulane coming in here with no fear against the number nine team in the country, excuse me, number eight team in the country in Virginia Tech and they played like they had nothing to lose. They played loose, which is what Coach Stockton wanted. 
And, you know, Virginia Tech gave what we knew they would, Georgia Amor and Liz Kitley. But the play of Olivia Sumiel in my mind is she was the difference maker in this one. So as that concludes it for Tulane and Virginia Tech as they head home, get a nice ovation from their crowd. Got an all-tournament players in this game, Hannah Pratt from Tulane and Elizabeth Kitley, of course, from Virginia Tech. Finishing yet with another great performance and we'll be joined by Kenny Brooks for Virginia Tech as they close this game out. So I do believe we have coach on the line, 76-70 win for Virginia Tech. And I guess I'll start their coach. Down at the half by two, Elizabeth Kitley with two points. You told us that she had some uncharacteristic like moments in the previous game yesterday. Three turnovers then, only one turnover in the second half. What was the difference in which your guard was able to show you and control the game in the second? Well, she woke up. She woke up and, uh, <laughs> you know, the, um, the focus had to be on her from our offensive end. Liz got in foul trouble and um, she just decided to she was George Amor. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I think, you know, what's going on right now with us, you know, we're trying to find herself and, you know, she's trying to be such a facilitator, you know, not only not only as a point guard, but a facilitator and getting people into their spots, what they need to do, making sure everything is run right. Uh, but she has to understand that she's a big part of that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and she's just going to have to do her thing and let people follow in order for her and, and, uh, and, uh, and not try to hold their hand and lead them in that direction because we're a little bit stagnant when that happens. So when Lynn went out, you know, I thought George had a different look in her eye and she was yeah. much better. Yeah. Coach, we got what we expected from Liz. We got, you know, in the second half, what we expected from jo from Georgia. But the play of Olivia Samuel was, in my opinion, she was the X factor today. She came in and did what was not expected in terms of a stat line yeah. for you guys. How impressed and how important was she to this win? Well, it was the reason why we got her, her, her veteran leadership, her experience. Uh, you know, she's been trying to find her way as well little up and down, you know, with even minutes and whatnot. But, um, you know, she came out and she was our spark plug today. We don't win this game if she doesn't play the way she played. And uh, we're going to need consistency from her. And if we can get that, then I'll be very, I'll be very happy coach. Uh, but I was very proud of her effort tonight. She played extremely hard. You guys had two tight games, yeah. right to the end of the wire <laughs> for both of them. I know you came away with both wins, so I know that helps the record, but how does this help your team in terms of their fight and knowing how to finish out games? Well, it, it was another game, you yeah. know, so it gave us yeah. some uh, some more tape. Uh, it gave us, gave us some more experience together, and uh, we just got to continue to get better. You know, I know, I know people want this thing to be like it was at the end of the last year, mm. but I promise yeah. you, this time last year, it wasn't like this. <laughs> you know? And so, so we just have to continue to fight. Um, you know, we, we didn't play well tonight, but honestly, I, I've never been a part of a, a, a game or a tournament where we had to play in such a short turnaround. Yeah. yeah. You know, our kids got back into the hotel last night at 8 o'clock. We had no prep time. Wow. We had no prep time. It was either prep or let them rest. And we decided to let them rest. So we came out here essentially uh, not knowing what Tulane was going to do yeah. because we really we chose rest over the prep. And uh, so I'm proud of our kids for that. You know, they're resolved. They came out. They never complained. Uh, and they just, they got it done. So maybe this will help us in a mental uh, capacity. Coach, last one for me. We were talking about yesterday, only knocking down two triples from yesterday and now walking away with 10. We know that the attention is gonna be on Elizabeth Kitley on the inside and how you have really put this roster together to have some solid options on the outside. What can you say about what you've learned about the pieces to this point? We have great shooters. Uh, we haven't shot the ball well the last three games. Tonight was a little bit better. Um, you know, I probably could have uh, been put up on child abuse charges, getting after <laughs> Kayla King, you know, uh, and, and, she, and she's my baby, you know, yeah. she, you know and you know, I just told her, you have to go be yourself and shoot the basketball, yeah. and uh, she did in the second half, we finally got one to fall from uh, from uh, Matilda Eck, uh, but we're, we're capable, the, the issue that we're having is we're trying to get used to each other, and we're trying to, every game's different for us, we have to go out and figure out how they're playing Elizabeth Kitley. Are they doubling this way? Yeah. Are they doubling that way? And that makes a big difference in where the ball is going to come out and where you're going to be to get your shot. So 
we, we just have to we just have to understand where it's coming from and recognize it a lot earlier. And when we do that, we'll get open looks and our feet will be set. But, uh, you know, it's just a work in progress. I mean, one defender, two or three. Elizabeth Kitley is still going <laughs> to do Kitley things. She but is. congratulations, Coach, on the win. I know you got a tough one coming up in the next couple of days against LSU as well. So the journey why, continues why, for the why, Huffies. Why, why, I'm sorry. Why, I know. Why, and we're why. in the beautiful Cayman yeah, Islands. I wanted why. you to soak that in before yeah, you left. Well, Thanks so much you. for your time. Always a pleasure to talk with you, Coach. Thank you, guys. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Thanks. So that will do it for Kenny Brooks, Virginia Tech, moving on to five and one after taking home two wins in this tournament. Tulane dropping to three and three. As we have a next game coming up for you, Niagara will take on UCLA. So that should be a great one that we have on deck. UCLA, the only team that is undefeated in this field. And we'll pre-game, we'll pre-tease that game just in a few. But what a spectacular game that we've seen, Kelly. One quick thought. Yeah, I mean, I was impressed from the beginning to the end with Tulane. We knew what to expect from Virginia Tech. They got it back. But Tulane's effort, that was a 10 for me. Tulane, definitely a team that no one should doubt and has definitely put up a fight within this tournament. We'll have another game on deck, our second one of the day, Niagara UCLA, coming up.